Matter flows through every fair Life totals dropping, feel the air Tapping lands, drawing destiny Victory's close, just to wait and see Magic dreams in my hand tonight Summon legends, see them ignite Battlefields, roaring cars in flight In this realm of magic, I take flight Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another deck tech series. So today we're going to be getting into uh, one of the decks that I have created. This isn't a world championship deck, this is a deck that I created. It is this blue-red storm deck. But before we take a, a look at that, I want to show you guys real quick. I did climb the ranked ladder from gold, like three, all the way up to diamond four using this deck. So let's go ahead and jump in and look at this deck so I can show you guys what I was doing and what we played and all of that. So... Let's go ahead and open this deck up. And really the, the, the deck was built around Raw, right? So we can get to the get him up to negative 10, uh, make the emblem, be able to storm off, do some fun things. But the deck has multiple win strategies. And so we're gonna take a look at those right now. So like I said, the main win strategy is Raw. Whenever you cast a non-creature spell, put a loyalty counter on Raw. He starts off with four. You can plus one, create a one, one blue red otter uh, with prowess, draw three cards, discard two with a minus three and minus 10, which is what we're after. Draw three cards, you get an emblem with instant and sorcery spells you cast have storm. Now let's take a look at some of the instant and sorceries, right? We've got three into the flood maw, which can bounce a creature that an opponent controls, or it can bounce a problem, some permit, like an enchantment, a planeswalker, anything like that, right? For opt, which is scry one, draw one. We have three phantom interference, which is basically like a mini counter spell. You know, it can counter target spell unless they pay two. It's really good in the early game, really bad in the late game unless they tap out for something. Or you can pay four to make a two, two white spirit creature token with flying. We have four burst lightnings, which are just a better shock. It can deal two damage or in the late game, we can kick it for four damage. Then we have four experimental augury, which just helps him helps us, you know, look through the deck. We can look at the top three, grab a card we want, and proliferate, which is very key with Raw. So when we cast an experimental augury with Raw out, he's getting two counters: one from the instant sorcery and one from proliferating. So it works really well in this deck, right? Then we have Think Twice, which is a, just a stellar card for a common for this deck. Two mana draw card, flash it back for three and a blue. The reason why I like it is because um with investigate with deduce i feel like this card's a little bit better because we can pitch it to a thundering falls and buy it back later if we want you can't pitch a deduce to a thundering falls and buy it back later so when you have this with thundering falls it helps you fi uh, filter through the deck faster and then with lightning strike because we don't have lightning bolt deal three damage to any target right then we have hottie Dijin, which is another win condition right play four of them and it just makes it a bigger, you know, for every instant sorcery we play, it makes it bigger. It also reduces the cost of some of our uh, instant sorcery. So if we have a think twice in the graveyard, it's back to being one in a blue. Yeah, we lose a power on him, but we can cast it for its original cost. Or we can make a lightning strike become a lightning bolt where it deals three for one red. Um, and, you know, it just helps the deck overall and gives it another win condition. Fire Annihilation. So this card I put in it's gonna it targets specific cards right it targets sheltered the apocalypse it targets unstoppable slasher it can get rid of the mosswood knight so it doesn't keep coming back for the the draw one adventure things like that right or the enduring enchantments we can just get rid of those guys completely the nice thing is is yes it does uh target an equipment too that is attached to the creature that's kind of irrelevant right now, but there are some Leyline Axes running around out there. So being able to hit a Leyline Axe off the creature that this hits, it's pretty spicy sometimes. So, um, and I chose it because it deals five, which like I said, it's gonna be killing, you know, Preacher of the Schism, Sheldred, a lot of different things, right? That have those bigger toughness to them. And being able to exile it makes it better because then it doesn't die and get the die triggers. Um, the only reason why we're running two, like I said, is very, very specific to what we're targeting. And I don't think we need more than them. And I don't think we need less than them. I think two is the perfect number. Um, and then we have Brothers Hit In, which helps us against aggro, mono red, things like that, to be able to kill off a lot of little problems and creatures that are overrunning us. Or 
We can destroy artifacts with mana value three or less. We can tell off a bunch of food tokens, uh, investigate tokens, Urobrask Forge, any type of problem, some artifact, right? Um, then we get to Right of the Dragon Collar. So this is another win con. Um, we put this down on turn six, get to untap with it. Then we just start making tons of dragons. Um, we have a lot of low costed spells. You know, we could bounce their dude, make a 5-5. Five, five. Draw a card, make a 5-5. Five, five. Deal two damage, make a 5-5. Five, five. Go look for some cards, make a 5-5. Five, five. <coughs> Excuse me. It's really good in the first game, right? This card comes out 90 to 95% of the time in game two. <coughs> because there's a lot of enchantment removal running around. Not to mention, it does cost a lot of mana. And so if we're playing against mono red, we're probably not getting this card out. Um, if I see I'm playing mono red and I play a thundering falls and I see this on top I'm pitching this thing to the graveyard so fast So it's one of those things where it's a good win condition like an alternate win condition But it's not the main theme of the deck, right? But it does I think playing two copies of it is like the perfect amount. I tried it with one I tried it with three. I felt like two is the best four is just way too many um, So yeah, and then we go to our lands. We have five islands five mountains four spire bluff four thundering falls and then I played two Fountain Pour with two Mirix. Now, the reason why we're running two and two is because Mirix can act like any, you know, we can use it for a red or a blue the turn it comes down to help cast these double red or double blue spells if we need it. Um, but also, Infect is a way, like, to poison out your opponent is a way to win the game. We do play Proliferate, so we can proliferate those things. I've had where... Um, I'm able to play a couple experimental auguries to proliferate out my opponent and kill them. So, and then fountain port because we have so many uh, token creatures in this deck that we are able to, you know, we can sack the fish, we can sack the otter, we can sack the dragons, we can sack the 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 spirit token we make off of this thing. I mean, there's so many tokens here that we can sacrifice, and even if they like kill our raw. They'll, they're going to give us map tokens, right? If they if they use like a, a get loss, we turn those map tokens into cards instead of using them to see if we maybe get a land off the top. So there's a lot of utility to using two Merrick's, two Fountain Ports, right? All right, so let's go to get into the sideboard. So we got three three steps ahead. Say that three times fast. Three three steps ahead. Um, this is a very good counter spell, right? Very modular counter spell. You can use it to counter, you can use it to make another Hottie Dijin, another 5-5 five, five Dragon, or you can draw two cards and discard a card. It really helps to be able to, you know, sometimes for five mana, counter, draw two, discard. I mean, it's it's just a really strong card. Then we go into Ghost Vacuum, right? This card has been really, really good against us, certain matchups, right? You have your reanimator matchups. Any matchups that play Unstoppable Slasher, that play the Knight, the Mosswood Knight, um, any card that's going to trigger in the graveyard to either come back or exile it or do something to where it keeps reoccurring, this thing gets rid of it. Just downright gets rid of it. Plus, you can get rid of problems and creatures out of the graveyard because if you're playing against green and black uh, mid range, they're probably going to be playing one or two gigs commands, but they, they can get back cards and get, uh, you know, get some recursion on you and, and attrition you out. Also getting rid of, uh, you know, like certain cards out of their graveyard and then activating the six. I had a game where I ended up getting a Sheldred, a, uh, a Glissa, and two bats with an unstoppable slasher um, after activating it. I got to eat two cards out of their hand and I had a bunch of dudes just sitting there. Yeah, they were one ones, but they were going to sit there and do a lot of damage, especially with the slasher. So it's a really good card. Uh, negate your basic counter spell, you know, non creature counter spell, just a good card. Uh, Screaming Nemesis. So, this is in the sideboard and not the main board. Reason why it's in the sideboard, you board this in against mono red and aggro. Um, a lot of the decks that can do actual damage to this creature, you turn around and send it right back to their face and cut off the life gain, or you just have a creature there that can two for one. Um, if you block a 3 3 and then turn around and ping, ping a 3 3 when this takes damage, you can two for one the aggro deck. So um, it can be a very strong card against aggro and red. Um, I don't like it in the main because there are so many uh, black, blue, black, green decks running around that just go for the throw. You know, they just kill it outright. So it's not really going to do much against them. Then we go to Jace, the Perfected Mind. This is only in here for the mill strategy. It's another win condition against certain decks. Um, 
being able to minus two or minus X are the two abilities you're using here. Sometimes you're using the plus one. It just depends on how the game flow is going and or maybe they have one creature out that you just want to mitigate for a couple turns before you pop this thing off or something. But mainly this is to mill them out. And then last but not least is Chandra's Hope Beacon. This card, um, I was running one of it in the sideboard, and then there was a couple games that I wish I would have had two, and it really has, uh, you know, it's got Pseudo Storm on it when you cast your first spell, um, Instant Sorcery, it copies it, um, and then being able to add mana or exile cards to see some more Instant Sorceries, because we are playing a ton of them, um, that can help too. I had a couple times where I plus one and found a Brotherhood in and it just wiped the board and helped me get, get ahead. So it has a lot of utility. And then just the fact that you can bring it down and deal five, you could be like kill off a Sheldra, kill off this for six mana. It's another way to be able to deal five damage or less to creatures on the board. Um, it's just a good card. So like I said, majority of the time, you're gonna be sideboarding out right of the Dragon Caller, right? Um, against certain matchups, you're gonna bring out Brotherhood in. So like if you're going against like mono black or um, like blue black mid range that is playing more demon esque than um, like the enduring side. So if you're playing the enduring curiosity one, you're going to want to leave these in. If you're playing more the demon mill strategy, these are going to come out um, just because they're just they're kind of useless, especially if you play against like mono black where they're playing tons of preachers, tons of sheldreds. You're not going to be killing anything with these. So you're going to be bringing these out, bringing in the Chandras, bringing in the uh, Ghost Vacuums, Three Steps Ahead, things like that to counteract, get rid of their stuff. Black Green Midrange, this card is really good. Uh, you're swapping out two rights for two Ghost Vacuums straight away. Um, and then when you, when you, let's say you're bringing in seven cards out of the sideboard, right? These two are already gone, so that leaves you with five other cards to bring out. If you have to cut the Brotherhood, now you're down to two. I just usually shave like an Op or an Augury or maybe like an Interference, depending on like if I'm on the play or if I'm on the draw. If I'm on the draw, I'll shave an Interference or two. Um, if I'm on the play, I will keep them in because I'm ahead of them on land count usually. Um, and so it's one of those things where you have the option. You're these lower spells here you're never going to take them completely out um i think every once in a while i may cut down to like two burst lightnings just because they don't do a whole lot against their creatures they're more of just leaving them in for that storm count for if i pop off a raw or something you know what i mean so it's a lot of just kind of figuring out where to shave where to bring in depending on how the game flow is going what matchups you're in um but these are very self-explanatory like you're bringing in counter magic against like the control matchups the blue black demir matchups um even oculus you bring them in oculus ghost vacuum is really good against oculus too um these top seven here are your more sideboarded cards these down here are your less sideboarded cards screaming nemesis like i said is only for the aggro and mono red matchups uh, Jace of Perfected Mind is more for the domain, like Atraxa matchups, where they're drawing tons of cards, they're milling themselves, things like that. Um, and then the Chandra, those are for more like, kind of like certain, like off the wall matchups, and possibly your like, your other matchups that you feel that you can get to six mana, and it be, you know, halfway decent. Um, so like Chandra is one of those cards that I don't bring in too often, but it's there and it does help in certain games. Um, that one, you might just have to kind of feel it out and be like, okay, I think Chandra would be good for this one. But like I said, these seven up here are going to be your more sideboarded cards. Um, but other than that, the deck plays really well. I think I was like 27 and seven or like 31 and nine or something like that. Um, it was a pretty good win percentage playing on the ladder and these were best of three matches that I was doing um, You can go back and I'll put a link down below to the last stream. I did um, Where I played the this this version of the deck um, It wasn't exactly like this. I did make some changes. I think halfway through the stream, but um, Yeah, it was it's been a really fun deck. I'm definitely gonna make it in paper. Um, I do have 
a lot of the cards in paper and so i'm thinking about building this as my standard deck for rcqs and things um, and also being that it's not a meta deck um, you're going to have a lot of surprise factor in the first game um, so it's going to be very interesting to see um, what you guys think because i know there's a lot of matchups i go play in and i know my opponents are like what is this guy playing like is he blue, blue like mono blue and then i play like a red land they're like whoa what's going on i can i can see the wheels turning on the other side sometimes when i'm playing this deck so um it's really interesting um an ideal starting hand is typically three lands with like an opt and into the flood maw um you you want some kind of draw spell like an opt a think twice or an augury you want some kind of a burn spell and then you want something mixed in maybe like a phantom interference or another burn spell or another draw spell so like two draw spells or two burn spells with like a phantom interference with three lands and maybe like a raw or a hottie dijin is a really good starting hand um being able to get those land drops in and then get to the point where you're just like okay end of your turn i'm gonna draw a card because you're not doing anything or whatever you know what i mean so it's you're really being um you're not being the aggressor in this game in this matchups with with this deck you're more of the sit and wait and see what what kind of plays out and then you decide okay am i going to counter that okay no am i going to kill that no okay i can do this and you decide where the game flow is going to go a lot of the time so um but then when you go up against the black matchups like uh black green mono black black blue duress does have a problem like i have played a lot of games where i've gotten duress three times and i still win because of the ability to draw multiple cards or um flashback my think twice is because a lot of their cards are dead cards like go for the throw um anoint with affliction a lot of these cards because you're only playing four creatures they'll burn them on your one ones because they don't want to take that that damage from a one one a two two a three three as you pump it up because they're just like, man, I gotta get rid of the creatures off the board. Um, and then they do a really good well, they do really well blocking too. Like the the little otters when they're coming in with like a four four that has no trample, you're just like chump block. You chump block. And I've had I've had games where I'm like, I'm making Mirix tokens at the end of turn every time and they're not doing anything, or I'm making fish tokens every turn to to keep pumping out some kind of creature. So it has a lot of resilience to it the deck does and i think it's a really well built deck but again i'm biased because i made it and i love this deck with <laughs> you know it's it's been a really fun deck to play so anyways that's what i got for you guys today i don't want to take up too much more of your guys's time but hey let me know down in the comments below what you think about this deck are there some things that you would change do you do you think there's some sideboard cards that i don't think that you think that I shouldn't be playing, that I should be playing over them. Like they're, you know, oh, you should be playing uh, Season of Weaving or whatever. I don't know. Anyways, give me some feedback. Let me know. Maybe build a deck, play test it, have some fun with it. Make it your own, please. Um, I'd love to hear your guys' ideas and maybe your success stories. Maybe you built it and you climbed all the way to Mythic with it. Let me know. All right. With that, I'm going to leave you guys like I always leave you. Hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day. And as always, stay syrupy, my friends. Magic dreams in my hands tonight Summon legends, see them ignite Battlefields, roaring cars in flight In this realm of magic, I take flight